Wenxin is a Guoqiang professor at the Institute for AI Industry Research, Tsinghua University. Prior to joining Tsinghua, he was a principal research manager at Microsoft Research Asia. His research interests are mobile and edge computing, and his research work has been published in top conferences and the journals. His presentation topic today is efficient on-device deep learning towards ubiquitous intelligence on the edge. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. It's really my great honor to give a talk at uh, Tiny ML Asia. So I, I'm going to talk about the efficient on-device deep learning towards the ubiquitous intelligence on the edge. So the edge computing is the new computing paradigm shift. Um, actually, if we look back, we can observe a very uh, uh, simple pattern uh, that is the computing paradigm uh, shift between the centralized computing and the distributed computing. From the centralized mainframe computing to the distributed personal computing, and then uh, to the centralized uh, cloud computing again, and also with the advances of AI, we have uh, not only the uh, cloud computing, we actually have the intelligent cloud computing. So it's naturally today, the computing uh, paradigm uh, became uh, became the distributed game. We have not only the intelligent cloud, but also have the intelligent edge. So in the uh, era of uh, edge computing, uh, it's really about the distributed devices and data. Uh, uh, today, uh, no matter where you are, uh, or whether you are at home, in office, uh, at many other places, or even on the go, we see uh, a lot of actually um, new type of smart devices uh, uh, emerging and they generate really a lot of data every day. So this uh, really calls for the uh, on the edge, on the device uh, intelligence. So that is the way run uh, the deep learning models on the edge devices. So there are uh, several driving forces. Uh, the first one is really the data explosion um, from the edge devices, such as the smart surveillance, surveillance cameras, several driving cars. They really generate a huge amount of data every day. It's simply, uh, uh, and affordable actually to send all the data over the network to the cloud to do the uh, uh, processing. And also there are some uh, strong need uh, of on-device intelligence. Uh, for example, in self driving, uh, driving cars, uh, actually it really uh, need the low latency and high availability and reliability. So if the network is down, uh, some uh, very bad thing um, may happen. And also, people have a strong need on the privacy protection, so that many people actually do not want to send their private data to the cloud for processing. Uh, also, uh, very importantly, uh, today with the uh, uh, the AI algorithm become uh, mature, so people are making a dedicated AI ASIC, uh, so that uh, the even small devices like smartphones are able to run. Uh, actually, uh, the deep learning models uh, on the device. Uh, so in the past uh, several years, uh, 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 we have been focused on uh, how to empower uh, the uh, every applications and devices uh, with AI, uh, particularly deep learning. Uh, and we focus on how to optimize the performance of model inference on diverse uh, uh, devices. Specifically, we have been focused on uh, four directions. The first is how to uh, auto automatically generate affordable AI models, actually customized for diverse hardware to uh, make the model uh, inference uh, more efficient. And the second is uh, giving uh, uh, deep learning model how we can actually fully utilize the analytic heterogeneous computing resource to fully automate actually uh, the inference performance. And the third one is actually, once we deploy a model uh, on device, uh, we face uh, uh, many uh, actually practical issues like the privacy uh, the protection and the security uh, and how to actually uh, debug in the AI models to make uh, sure the decisions from the AI models are reliable. And the uh, last one is, uh, is on device uh, continual learning. Once we deploy the model, uh, we do not want to stop we want hope actually the device can learn new knowledge uh, from the new input and uh, continuously actually improve the model and also uh, work together with other devices uh, improve uh, the global model uh, in a collaborative way. 
So given the time limit today, I will uh, focus on the two, uh, uh, first the two uh, directions. Uh, specifically, I will talk about the three things. Uh, the first one is, uh, I want to uh, argue actually, uh, the efficient new uh, network design I must consider hardware uh, features. And the second one is how to design hardware uh, friendly uh, neural networks. Uh, and finally, is how to optimize the model inference on edge devices. So if we look at the, uh, the on-device deep learning stack, uh, there are no innovations at the different uh, actually uh, levels, layers, from the, uh, the hardware design uh, to the uh, edge uh, uh, frameworks, and also the, uh, the, the uh, efficient uh, uh, model design uh, for mobile, for edge devices. Um, this is how actually uh, today people, how, uh, how people design and deploy the models. Uh, for the model design, usually we start from design space with a different number of layers or different type of operators. Uh, and uh, we either uh, manually design a model with uh, experts uh, or we leverage some automation uh, tools like the neural architecture search. Uh, then we can generate, uh, we can design a model. Then we can will uh, actually deploy that model onto hardware. Uh, that actually a, a gap uh, we can see actually the current a uh, neural uh, network design actually does not consider much uh, the platform features. Uh, usually people will use uh, uh, some constraints like the flops, uh, that is the number of computations uh, to limit actually the model size so that uh, we can have the uh, good performance of the module assay. Uh, however, uh, less the flops uh, does not mean actually less latency. For example here, Actually, the MoveNet Edge TPU uh, is multiple times uh, bigger than MoveNet uh, V3, but actually it runs uh, a little bit fast on the Edge TPU. Uh, also, a fast model uh, uh, does not uh, always run fast on every hardware. So for example here, actually the MoveNet V3 uh, is an improved version than MoveNet V2. So it runs faster uh, than uh, V2 on mobile CPU. However, on VPU, actually, uh, it, uh, uh, mobile net V2 runs much faster than uh, V3. Uh, so to fully understand uh, how the uh, neural network uh, uh, works behave on diverse edge hardware, uh, actually, we conducted a measurement study. Uh, we have multiple, actually, unexpected findings. Uh, due to time limit, uh, limit uh, here, I only show you one example. <clears throat> that is how the latency, uh, the inference latency <clears throat> of the convolution layer actually increase uh, with the number of output channels. Here you can see uh, for the CPU, CPU, DSP, and the, uh, also VPU, uh, instead of, uh, of a linear uh, increase of the latency <clears throat> with the increase of the number of output channel, we indeed observe a step a padding here. So that means that sometimes for each step actually, we will add uh, more actually uh, output channels. Uh, the latency actually uh, does not increase. So this is kind of unexpected. So if we know this uh, <coughs> behavior, actually we can uh, we can actually uh, design more more efficient uh, actually uh, models. Uh, for example, we can have more uh, output channels without increase the latency. <coughs> Yeah, sorry, uh, uh, excuse me, actually I got a flu, so didn't uh, recover fully yet. Uh, so, so my voice is not, uh, not good today. Uh, 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 I'm sorry for that. So hopefully I convinced you uh, that the neural art design must consider your hardware uh, characteristics. Then the next question is how we can design the hardware friendly uh, neural uh, networks. So let's uh, go back uh, to the, uh, the model design uh, uh, part. So if we can, for example, we can, uh, for a given model architecture, if we can decide uh, the latency and the energy cost uh, of the model inference on a particular hardware platform, then instead of generating a single model, we can actually generate uh, uh, different uh, customized models actually for different type of uh, <clears throat> hardware platforms. Uh, but the problem is how we can do that. Uh, the easy way is actually we just uh, actually uh, connect uh, uh, with the real hardware, do the real measurement. But that is 
um, actually not possible uh, because, uh, well, for example, if when we um, use the, the, the neural architecture, architecture search tools to, to design a model, we can easily actually generate a, a very large number of model architectures. So it's simply uh, not feasible to measure e uh, every model can actually architecture uh, candidates uh, on real device. So to solve the problem, we propose actually we can do some profiling actually. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, we can do some offline profiling. That is the way for each actually uh, uh, hardware, we could build a predictor. Actually, uh, for given a model architecture, we can tell what's uh, uh, the latency or the energy cost uh, on a particular hardware. So this, uh, 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 this kind of prediction uh, for them, the latency prediction is actually not a new problem. So previously people already uh, uh, have some proposals, for example, uh, uh, the flop based uh, one I just mentioned is actually not very accurate. There are also other proposals like uh, the operator level prediction or the model level prediction. Uh, they, they are also not uh, accurate or cannot be generated to, uh, to all the models. So we conducted a work called the meter. We try to <clears throat> build the accurate latent predictor. So, uh, so, 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 so we, we, we hopefully I can make it uh, actually uh, 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 generic uh, as well. Uh, the key challenge to do the actually the latent prediction is actually uh, uh, due to the framework level optimizations, uh, particularly the back end uh, dependent ones. Uh, as shown here uh, from the uh, figure, actually, today's actually uh, uh, um, deep learning framework, actually, they will do some back end dependent opti uh, optimization. For example, for CPU or GPU, they will have the dedicated the back end optimizations. That the optimization is uh, usually a black box and it's hard to decide. <clears throat> One of the such uh, uh, actually optimization is operator fusion. Uh, that is uh, for giving uh, multiple uh, actually operators, uh, we can either in implement uh, each operator in a dedicated kernel, or we can combine them together actually to implement them together multiple uh, actually operators in uh, a larger kernel. Uh, so for example, here I'm showing an example actually for uh, two operators, a comp and uh, activation uh, operator. We can implement them within, uh, in two separate actually kernels, or we can implement them uh, in one single actually uh, kernel. So this actually make a, uh, uh, has actually big impact on the uh, model inference latency. So if we just do the operator level actually prediction, uh, the, the, the prediction error of the whole model will be uh, large. Uh, for, for them here, I'm showing uh, our VPO, the error may as large as uh, 40%. So in any meter, our key idea is actually we, because the, the kernel is the basic execution unit on the device. So we uh, propose to do the actually kernel level latent prediction. So the basic idea is uh, for a given model, actually we first actually divide it, the model into multiple kernels. Then we do the uh, kernel level latent prediction. Then we can get the, the whole model latency actually with the sum of the kernel latencies. Uh, there are two problems to, to be solved. Uh, one is uh, how to detect uh, the kernel boundaries. And the second one is for detecting the kernels, how we can predict the accurately for, uh, for their actually latency. Uh, so to address the first problem, uh, we propose actually automatic kernel detector. Uh, so basically for we design a set of actually test cases and for, for, for different actually operators, we can measure uh, the combination of the operators. Line. Then we can actually decide the fusion rules. Uh, and based on the, uh, the detected actually uh, kernel fusion rules, uh, we can, for a given model, we can run an algorithm actually to divide the model into uh, kernels. For example, here I'm showing an example of the ResNet 18 block. So it had actually uh, eight uh, operators, but uh, eventually with our algorithm, we can decide actually uh, it is implemented in uh, only three kernels. Uh, so once we have the kernel, uh, kernels, uh, the next uh, uh, problem is how to predict its latency. It's also, also not actually simple. 
uh, because uh, the, the, uh, the, the large sample space, for example, in the convolution operator, actually there are multiple dimensions to consider. So it's, uh, had, it had a huge actually uh, configuration uh, space to, uh, to sample. And also, as I, I already showed, actually, uh, there are some uh, nonlinear actually uh, pattern uh, for the latency uh, uh, with the different dimension of parameters. So if we just do the random sampling, we can easily actually miss the crucial data points so that we cannot achieve actually uh, accurate, uh, uh, accurate and uh, latency prediction. So to address uh, the challenge, actually we propose a, a adaptive data sampler. Um, uh, the key idea is actually we start first to start from the uh, the popular uh, actually uh, configurations uh, actually leverage the experience we learned from how uh, human experts actually design the models. Uh, then we just do the uh, uh, modeling. Then we do the test. So then for the Data points actually with the high error, uh, we will do uh, actually more fine grained actually uh, sampling uh, so that with the multiple runs, uh, eventually we can build a, actually uh, a good actually uh, prediction model. So here I just show you some uh, uh, some results. Um, uh, we you can see actually uh, uh, on the CPU, GPU, and also VPU. Uh, our actually uh, approach uh, can significantly output outperform uh, the baselines, uh, including actually the flop space and flop plus the mic base and also the GCN based approach. So then, with uh, our actually latency predictor, uh, actually we can plug in these predictors uh, into the existing the, the NAS systems so that we can actually uh, build a customized uh, models um, um, uh, for different type of hardware. Then hopefully we already can get a good model for a particular hardware platform. So the next question is how to optimize, the, further optimize the model inference performance on edge devices. So if we look at actually the uh, edge devices, they usually have very limited computing resource. For them, the smartphones, uh, the mobile, CPU is much uh, actually uh, weaker actually than the server CPUs. <clears throat> uh, so we may imagine actually those computing results is already fully utilized, but um, uh, it is not true or actually. So here I'm showing actually the, the mobile CPU uh, utilization uh, for the uh, CNN models. Uh, we can see actually uh, for the bigger CPU cost, actually uh, the utilization is not bad. It's uh, on average 70%. But the first little cost, actually, the utilization, the utilization on average is only 10%. So the, 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 the reason uh, for this underutilized uh, resource uh, is because uh, the, the OS, uh, the unbalanced task distribution by the OS 6 scheduler. So starting from actually the, the workload partition, actually, uh, the underlying library actually ignore the hardware asymmetry and uh, also the resource constraints uh, actually between the big cost and the little cost. And there are also some actually uh, memory uh, copy, actual mem memory copy overhead. Uh, and also the OS scheduler uh, does not do a good job actually to schedule the, the, the workload uh, between the, all the little cost and the big cost. So to optimize the deep learning inference on big little uh, CPU, uh, we propose a SMO uh, a system to, to, to accelerate uh, the performance. So the key idea of our approach is actually we build a cost model direct the actually uh, part block partition uh, scheme, uh, which uh, actually can actually uh, do a better job to partition the workload. Uh, and then we also prearrange the memory layout to reduce the memory uh, cost. Also for mobile or, uh, devices like smartphones, we also care about the, the, the energy cost so that we also propose a data reuse based frequency setting uh, approach, try to figure out uh, uh, a more efficient, uh, energy efficient uh, really frequency setting. And the, during the uh, inference time, uh, we, uh, we design a asymmetric wide scheduling approach so that we can actually do the uh, uh, schedule, schedule better. Uh, 
So here I show you, uh, just show you the how uh, uh, the cost model based block partition works. So basically, we consider both the computation and the memory access cost, also the degree of parallelism, and uh, also the cost of the task scheduling and the framework. Um, uh, here I show you uh, uh, a illustration of how we can do the uh, um, actually the workload partition and the scheduling. So from the workload partition, we consider the difference of the uh, big cost and the little cost. Uh, and, uh, uh, and for the scheduling, uh, we will pin each thread on each call so that we can uh, achieve better data locality. And we prevent the, the workload, workload, worker stealing from the big call to little call so that we can ensure uh, every call can finish their work actually uh, at uh, almost the same time to minimize the, the whole model inference uh, uh, latency. <clears throat> so here I'll just show you some results. Uh, uh, we can see actually, we can significantly actually uh, improve uh, the model uh, inference latency and also uh, reduce the energy cost. Uh, if we, uh, we, we want to fully uh, optimize the model inference latency, we can set the, uh, the CPU bracket at the highest so that we can actually have a higher actually speed up, uh, but also at the same time, we can still reduce the energy cost. If we care more actually energy cost, we can choose the better uh, uh, actually uh, CPU frequency. Uh, in, the, uh, uh, in, in this case, we can actually uh, save more energy, uh, but still we can uh, actually reduce the, uh, the inference latency. Uh, so I'd like to end my talk with this slides. So the world uh, is a computer. This is actually vision of Microsoft. Uh, and uh, we really see it today actually, uh, no matter where you, you are, we have the sensors to sense the environment and the users. And we have the distributed actually computing resource actually uh, to leverage AI actually models to process the data and to better serve uh, the users. Uh, and. Uh, and this is really a good time for us actually to work together actually to make the world uh, even better. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Yunxin. Thank you for uh, speaking at the conference while recovering from the flu. Yeah, I think you brought up a very good point. The hardware utilization is one of the biggest challenges in model deployment. I also want to extend our gratitude to all the TinyML strategic sponsors who made this event possible. At the executive sponsorship level, we have ARM, my old um, employer, who provides the software and the hardware foundation, TinyML. Uh, Edge Impulse is the TinyML platform for all developers. Qualcomm advances AI research to make efficient AI ubiquitous. Cintiant offers end-to-end -end deep learning solutions for TinyML and Edge AI. At the Platinum sponsorship level, we have Reality AI adds advanced sensing to your product with Edge AI and TinyML. Genesis, who has big ideas for every space. With our golden sponsors, Latent AI develops adaptive AI for the intelligent edge. Maxim Integrated, who is now part of analog devices, enables edge intelligence. Seed Studio, they are the IoT hardware enabler. Sensi ML builds smart IoT sensor devices from data. SynSense build sensing and inference hardware for ultra low power devices. We will have some special partner sessions in the next few days led by the sponsors we just introduced. At the super sponsors level, we have Aeon devices, Deep Light, AMSA Vision Sense, Green Waves Technology, Gravity, HOTG, ImagineMob, Kixel, Rexin, and SAP.